So um, I hope everybody got one of these handouts on the way in. Did you? Um, it felt like for your prayer time, if you want to meditate on some verses, it's very clear that we're in a season of spiritual warfare, right? If that's not clear to you by now, I don't know, we must be living in a different place. And uh, I just, you know, they're not really specifically in any order, these verses that I gave you, but just different prayer points that you can look at. Um, we'll try to focus on some of these things as January and February uh, roll out. Um, we're also bringing in speakers. Uh, we will do that again. We have one coming that uh, specializes in healing people of trauma. That'll be in March. So just the theme right now, that's what I said, 2021, 20, win the war for your altar. We all have a personal altar. That's where we spend time before the Lord. And it ties into this week's um, title. Uh, we've been covering different parts of that theme of the sanctity of life. Remember when Lisa Melillo came up and talked about how we're partnering with uh, First Choice Women's Resource Centers and we're trying to give people an alternative to an abortion, right? If a, if a pregnant girl needs help, that's what they're doing. There's five different locations around New Jersey. It's, it's a really top agency for this. Because as Christians, we can't just sit by idly and do nothing, right? If we do nothing, it means we don't really care. And we have to care. We have to care about the state of our nation and we've got to get involved. We can't just complain about things. We've got to get involved and do things like David said, start partnering with food pantries. And you, can bring, you can bring food to church if you want. If you have children, while you're out shopping, once you get through your list, buy some more food for the people that need help. And then have your children write out a card and say, we're praying for you. You're never going to meet those people, but those people can feel the love of God coming through. Many are from other nations that aren't used to be people being generous. And when we did the Christmas outreach, we brought it to the high school because we have people that are working in the high school and specifically know the families that need the help the most, which is awesome. And it's all done uh, under, you know, uh, confidentially so that their names aren't being released or anything. We just give it to the counselors who are dealing with the families. And one of the letters we got back from one of the students who was there helping said, we just got here from Asia and we didn't grow up in a culture that had any generosity. We didn't have any idea what you were doing. Why would you bring food for free? Because we take it for granted here that we're a Christian country founded on Christian principles. As hard as the enemy tries to take those away, we're going to fight back. Amen? Say it a little louder, church. We're going to fight back. We're going to have free speech. We're going to, we're going to follow what the Constitution says and be a force for good. And, you know, maybe we got a little too lazy. Maybe we got too apathetic about getting involved. I don't think we should say, Jesus, hurry up and get us out of here. I think he said, occupy until I come. That we'll be busy about the Father's business. I have food that you don't know about, disciples. My food is to do the will of the one who sent me. Set captives free. <laughs> get people out of the mess they're in now. It's not just about waiting until we go to heaven, right? We have a job to do while we're here. And that's always going to be our philosophy. It's what we've done since the first day we came out here. Um, partly because Trish is such a, has a strong anointing in deliverance. We've been helping people with deliverance since the first day we started the church. I mean, she had a waiting list for people down in uh, Essex County where, where we were before we came out here. So God didn't give us these gifts to keep them up on the shelf. We're supposed to meet people where they're at and say, hey, God's going to help us get through this. God's going to use his power flowing through the church and flowing through Christians to see situations improve for the Lord. That's the way this works. And worship's a great thing that we did today. And that's why I put the picture of, of the guitar, me with the guitar because this comes out of Proverbs uh, 25 too, the, the text verse for today. Um, I called it living in the hiding place of God's glory. All right, that's a typical passion translation kind of phrase, right? The hiding place of God's glory. Wouldn't you love to live there? What's your address? The hiding place of God's glory. <laughs> That's where I live. And people are like, well, that's not practical. I have to go to work. I'm, I'm a busy guy. I'm too busy to pray. Don't say that. You're too busy not to pray. 
We just might mean something differently when we say pray. Like you think you have to just block everything else out and go and have your list ready and, and, and beg God. You don't have to do that. That's nothing wrong with bringing a list to God. But what about just inviting him into every situation during the day? He cares about everything we do. So why wouldn't we ask him? I'll tell you why. We're not used to people helping us. Maybe we didn't have a good father. Maybe our father or mother just was too busy to be bothered with us. And sometimes we translate that to how that's how God looks at us. Can we break that lie right now? That is not how God looks at us. He never slumbers. He never sleeps. Whatever's important to you, it's important to him because you're his child. And we have the spirit of adoption in us that cries out, Abba, Father. That's a very intimate term. Daddy. And I don't know about you, but I didn't have that picture of God when I was growing up. So it's something that we have to be very intentional about. This is one way to do it. I'm going to live in the hiding place of God's glory. It's not just a special service when we come to church. It is wonderful to all be together and worship together like we did today. I didn't want to stop. I was saying to the guys in the back, I love it when I take my earplugs out and my ears are numb. Because I'm sitting basically right on top of those drums. And don't we like having real drums back, church? Yes. Got to thank the guys in the booth. They work really hard. And uh, go ahead, give them a hand. Because that's an important job. Um, so the, the actual verse uh, that that comes from, that that title comes from, is 25.2 in the Passion. God conceals the revelation of his word in the hiding place of his glory. Okay. That takes us up to a whole other level, right? Because then it says the honor of kings is revealed by how they thoroughly search out the deeper meaning of all that God says. All right? We're kings and priests, and we don't just sit back and wait for God to do it. We are diligent seekers after God, right? That's Hebrews 11. God rewards those who diligently seek after him. So right after God conceals the revelation of his word in the hiding place of his glory... It's because we need to go there with a sober mind. We need to ask him, Lord, you said we were kings and priests, and the honor of kings is revealed by how they thoroughly search out the deeper meaning of all that God says. And I think most of you that have been saved any amount of time know the longer you're a Christian, the more you realize it's an endless treasure of truth. Fair enough? The Bible? You could read it and go back and read it again front to back, and find all new things every time you go back through it. It's the revelation of God, but it's also that you're maturing. And as you mature as a Christian, you look at that verse and you see it differently now through more seasoned eyes.